If you're having trouble understanding the concept of automatic exposure control, or AEC, then you've come to the right place. We're going to be talking about AEC in a way that your instructor may not have presented it to you in class. So let's not turn this into a boring PowerPoint or lecture, and let's just study together. So if you're a rad tech student, your instructor may have said that AEC is similar to driving an automatic car, whereas a manual exposure is like driving a manual car. This might work for students who actually had to learn how to drive a stick shift, but it's not so applicable to those in younger generations who didn't need to do that. In more recent years, GE has created this refrigerator that will fill up a cup up to 90% regardless of the size. So it has sensors that tell the refrigerator, okay, the cup has been filled up 90% and then it shuts off. This is similar to AEC. When you're using AEC in radiology, the radiographer will select the KV and the MA station not to be confused with mass. When using AEC, the radiographer does not select the seconds or the time of the exposure. When comparing this to our refrigerator, you can think of it as selecting the water instead of crushed ice or cubed. So you're selecting KV and MA. So after you make your selection of the KV and MA, you would position your patient in front of the wall bucky or on the table bucky. This is similar to placing the cup or container onto the tray in the refrigerator. The buckies contain photocells that are programmed to monitor how much radiation they're being exposed to in order to determine when they've had enough and then it will cut off the exposure automatically. This is similar to the sensors in the refrigerator that determine when the cup is full up to 90% and then it will no longer dispense water once it reaches that level. Also on the control panel, you are able to select the photocells that you are wanting to activate. The selected photocells will be the only ones that are measuring the amount of radiation that they're being exposed to. So how does this actually work? The KV and the MA will continue to exit the x-ray tube and expose the patient in the wall bucky or table bucky until those photocells say, I've reached my expected number of x-rays and I can terminate the exposure. The exposure will continue until it either reached the number of x-rays that it's expecting to reach or if a backup timer has been reached. The backup timer is like setting a red line across the cups and the exposure will terminate whether the glass is full or not depending on where that backup timer is set. Backup timers are set in order to protect the patient so that they're not being overexposed. Say if the refrigerator malfunctioned and that backup timer was not set, then it would just overflow the cup, resulting in an overexposure to the patient. Are you following me? And in contrast, we see patients that are very small and patients that are very large. So we need to adjust the backup timer because if we leave it the same for everybody, for our larger patients, their backup timer will cut off so that they're not receiving enough radiation, resulting in an underexposed image. Another factor that can affect AEC is proper positioning of the patient. If the part of the patient is not aligned with the photocell that is selected, then you're not telling that photocell when the appropriate time is to shut off the exposure. So if you're doing a C-spine x-ray and the patient's spine is not aligned in front of the center cell on the bucky, then that cell is going to receive too much radiation too quickly and it will terminate the exposure resulting in an underexposed image. Also, if you're selecting the incorrect photo cell for the exam that you're performing, then it will either result in an underexposed or an overexposed image. For example, when you're doing a chest x-ray, you need to select the two outer cells. If you select the center cell, then your lungs will be overexposed because x-rays go through lung tissue very quickly, whereas x-rays are attenuated in the bone 
much more slowly. So it takes longer for the photocell to receive the appropriate amount of radiation prior to termination. That was a lot of words. To make it simple, I think of lungs as being a strainer and bone as being a sponge. Water will go through a strainer very quickly, but water going through a sponge will get absorbed and the remaining x-rays after the absorption or after being attenuated aren't as much as going through a strainer. I really hope that this analogy and demonstration helped you to understand the concept of AEC. That way, whenever you're studying for a test or if it shows up on your registry, then you can picture it in your mind of what's actually happening when you're making an exposure using AEC. If it did help you, please let me know by either commenting below or giving this video a thumbs up. That way I can curate the next video into something similar that can help you. As always, I hope that everyone stays safe and healthy and I will see you in the next one.